Make sure to use our code FLIPSIDE to get a two-week subscription to the Key Collector app. Welcome to the Prospect 10. Uh, you can catch us on the Tales from the Flipside channel on YouTube. Make sure to like and subscribe. And on our Prospect 10 list, we have five additional books that you can only catch on YouTube. So let's go ahead and start out with number 15. At number 15, we have Edge of spider Geddon, number two, the second print. This is the first appearance of Addie Brock and the Venom mech suit. First Morbius kaiju monster, and it's a second print variant featuring Morbius. Uh, this is the only appearance of the alternate uh, universe characters, but intriguing enough to be possible featured in the Spider crossover down the line. Uh, they're currently at around $30 for a raw copy. Once more people know about this issue, $30 could be a cheap price. For number 14, we have Action Comics number 900, the 1 in 5, the Adam Hughes variant. So this could be adapted for the next Superman film which could be in a step in the right direction to modernize Superman with the current uh, social climate. In this comic, Superman feels like he cannot fight for a world of injustice as a U.S. citizen and feels like others think he represents the U.S. government as is. By renouncing his citizenship, he breaks uh, from the, these chains. Uh, Superman is rumored to be an African-American in the next film. So we'll see what happens. At number 13, we have Firestar number one, the one shot. All right, so this is a great Stephanie Hans cover. This is a one shot that features Firestar. So, um, and it is also rumored that Firestar will be appearing in a, in a live action series. At number 12, we have Nova number one. This is the first solo series of Sam Alexander. And with Kamala heating up, this is easily an easy play to pick up. Uh, watch out for those second prints for this book also. At number 11, we have Heroes for Hire, number five. This is the one in 15. This is definitely a cover play for any Moon Knight collectors. And for the reason why you're all here, our top 10. So starting off at number 10, we have Tales to Astonish, number 59. Yeah, this is a pretty undervalued book. Um, it's, it's revealed... Uh, that stress and anger lead to Hulk's overall transformation based on the press release with uh, Donny Cates' new Hulk run. They're going to delve into the mysteries of his, his full-on anger. So this is good spec around that. And, and knowing Donny Cates, he turns so many books into keys. So this, this would be a, uh, a good play on the whole basis of what he he's going to be doing. At number nine, we have Invincible Returns, number one. In this issue, Invincible returns to his old costume, and a new villain is introduced, Thrag. Uh, spoiler alert on. This won't be the only spoiler alert tonight. But Thrag ends up being the big bad for the last half of the series. Obviously, we have a long way to go. Hopefully, the Invincible animated series will continue. Uh, and interest in all the issues will uh, continue. Uh, but back to Thrag, I want to quote a, a great comic scholar, the Mighty Mel V, who says... My man, Battle Beast, gave Thrag a run for his money. Of course, I can't do it justice. But uh, maybe we can get Mel, me, Mel V on here at a later date to uh, tell us some more about Thrag and, and, and his man, Battle Beast. So this had 19.9K copies, according to Comicron. There's a couple variants, and there's even a second print to keep watch for. I love Invincible. I can't wait for the second season, and I feel like a lot of other people feel the same way. All right, at number eight, we have Fantastic Four, number 353. First appearance of Mobius M. I don't understand how you can still buy raw copies of this book in high grade for less than $100. We've seen what uh, Disney Plus series do to traditionally C and D list characters like Agatha Harkness and U.S. Agent 
this book makes a lot of sense and I have nothing but the utmost hope for the Loki series and our man, Owen Wilson. Wow. For our number seven book, we have Amazing Spider-Man, number 569, Any Cover. Also uh, a super cool spec book. Uh, if you are a fan of Marvel toys, then you already know that Anti-Venom has been released alongside all of the MCU characters. And there's a, a lot of speculation in that regard. Uh, will the introduction of the Spider-Verse lend itself to Flash Thompson appearing as Anti-Venom in another iteration in live action? I don't know. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, we are in a market where perception uh, is as much reality as reality. Uh, and if people think it's going to happen, it might as well have already happened. Uh, cool book. Keep your eye out for it. At number six, we have What If Planet Hulk, number one. So this is the second spoiler alert. We're going to really try hard <laughs> not to spoil things. So What If Planet Hulk is a one-shot. It has the first published appearance of Scar, the son of Hulk. There is another book in canon, World War Hulk, number five, that has the first appearance of Scar in canon. However, we really didn't want that to make the top 15 because we remember what happened last time we had a book that had a hundred over a hundred thousand <laughs> print run <laughs> so but we're kind of stuck, stuck with this luckily this this made the top 15 and the other one didn't uh but we have a very reliable source that scar appears after a long absence in the final panel of an upcoming marvel comic and it appears that he's going to be a player in at least the next issue maybe the entire arc or longer uh, will deal with his reappearance. Uh, in contrast to World War, War Hulk number five, this only has a 46K print run. So you're a little bit safer. Uh, there's only one cover. There's no variance. The only possibility is if there's a newsstand. I don't know if one exists or not. And if you think about it, this was a 2007 release. So it's getting a little bit long in the tooth uh, for a one-shot modern uh, in high grade. So you heard it here first, Scar is making a comeback. And even though we can find a lot of his books in dollar bins, I think this is gonna be a content driven uh, buy for a lot of folks. At our number five book, we have Famous Monsters of Filmland, number 165. Yeah, this is uh, an awesome magazine. I mean, the. The, this book came out the same time as uh, Star Wars number 42 and kind of, uh, I would say, Ty's uh, first cover of Bubba Fett, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. So, I mean, you want to talk about low-hanging fruit. Um, you look at Bosk just popping out of the cover and, of course, I, uh, good old IG-88 in the background. Um, for any Star Wars fan, this is a must-have. Man. I, I, I don't have it. I'd, I'd love to have it. It's possible that Bosk and, and Boba Fett uh, may appear in an episode of The Bad Batch. <laughs> At number four, we have Uncanny X-Men 139. So this is the first appearance of Heather Hudson. Um, this is a MCU Vindicator slash Guardian that will most likely be Heather. Uh, she held the mantle much longer than her deceased husband then. James Vindicator is the first appearance of the An Uncanny X-Men 109, which is about 3K and 9.8 right now. So this book is totally undervalued. At number three, we have Captain America, number 295. The Sisters of Sin first appear in the pages of this particular issue. Uh, as many of our listeners are aware, Sin is now heavily rumored to be the villain for Captain America 4. Uh, we believe that the Sisters of Sin are highly probable to appear alongside of that character in live action 
if those rumors are true. This is a dollar bin book. At number two, we have Invincible Iron Man, number nine, the second print. So the comic community is obviously very high on the prospects of Riri Williams, and this first print has seen a dramatic rise. The second print has followed, but not to the same deg degree. But when you compare the CGC census, there is only nine point only 88 9.8s of the second print where whereas the, the first print has over 1500 oh actually it has 1500 graded and 754 9.8s so you do the math obviously i just uh ramble over the numbers <laughs> um but if you add in the the low print run for, with the high demand and and the disney plus show coming uh, if you look at what in Invincible Iron Man 7, the third print is done, and you think about Iron War, uh, Armor Wars coming up, uh, look, a, a rising tide is going to lift all ships. It, it, you're not going to see the number nine second print, you know, sort of left behind. People aren't suddenly going to go, oh, second prints, they're, 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 they're nothing compared to first prints. It, it's just, you know, we, we, we can't change the market looking like still it may be uh, uh, undervalued and it'll be interesting to look back after uh, Riri's own show and Armor Wars and see where this number nine second print uh, Rawls and nine eights where, where they are after that happens. It should be a meteoric rise. And for our number one book, we have Captain America number 290. The second time on the Spec 10, uh, if you pay close attention to our list, there are a couple repeats. Uh, Invincible Iron Man 9, second print at the number two spot, and then Captain America 290 uh, at the number one spot. Uh, following uh, our inclusion of Captain America 290 on the Spec 10, uh, a number of highly reliable sources, uh, not the least of which were Daniel RPK and Charles Murphy, uh, indicated that Sin will in fact be the villain of Captain America number four. Um, I live in a comic rich area of the United States and these books are gone. Uh, I have one lousy copy that is nowhere near a 9.8 and if you're lucky enough to already have uh, copies, I suggest holding on to them. If not, uh, I would try to snag them now while they're affordable. Uh, maybe this book dips before the big screen appearance. Uh, maybe not. It's real hard because of all that black. And um, right now you can buy a high grade copy for about $40. All right. Well, thank you for joining us for our Prospect 10 list. Happy hunting.